Hey folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video is a little different from my regular viewers because we're working on something out of the 21st century of all things, a 2019 Ram Promaster van. A buddy of mine is living that van life down by the river. Actually, he's living behind a piercing shop because that's not weird, but we're gonna install some creature comforts into that thing, a sunroof rear windows into it and a light bar on it. So he came to me to help him out with that project. And I thought I would show you folks beginning to end how I tackled projects like this. So let's check it out. For those of you who are in the know, as far as the van life is concerned, we're installing a CRL sunroof in this thing and a couple of rear windows from Van Windows Direct. The light bar my buddy picked up off of Amazon. And really that I just wanna show you how I pass the wiring through into the cab because I came up with what I thought was a kind of neat way of doing that. And we'll cover that at the end of this video. I'm gonna go ahead and throw links in the description down below so you can find the parts that we're working with right there as well as some of the tools and equipment we used for this project. Some of those links are affiliate links that does support this channel but doesn't cost you anything more. So I do appreciate it if you use those. We're gonna start off with the sunroof install, first of all. This is the thing that I filmed the most of, and it'll show you the most of the process, the way I tackled a project like this. First things first, we checked out the sunroof itself, looked it over, made sure that everything wasn't damaged, and that it was what we were expecting it to be for this van. Now the CRL sunroof did come with a template, and I did find that to be pretty darn accurate and useful. I checked it against the window to make sure that it was what I wanted. Wouldn't be the first time I've seen something like this where it just didn't match reality of the part that I was working with. So we checked it against the van window and it did seem accurate and it was gonna work for us. After checking all of the components and figuring out that we were pretty happy with what was going on here, we moved on to the roof itself. Now he's installed insulation and furring strips on the roof for installing his actual roofing, the sheathing that he's gonna do on the inside of this van later. And doing so, he actually put them aside of the cross members to gain just a little headroom in the van. Though Emery's himself doesn't really need it, somebody like me being six foot tall, I actually did appreciate this modification. Now, the reason that I mentioned those strips is because we needed to put one behind that last cross member where the sunroof was gonna be. So we held that up there and marked the roof so we knew where that was gonna be so we could position our sunroof and leave that space we required for that strip. After we marked that and figure out the minimum distance we had to get that sunroof away from that cross member, it was time to move on to actually marking out the area for the cross member. So I just took my time, measured out from various different angles and positions side to side, getting that sunroof centered on the van. The best thing I can recommend here is to find yourself something that is the same on both sides, a flange that seems to be the same, a, a crease in the bend of the cross members on each side. Find something that you can mark and accurately measure side to side and get that center point. This is definitely a measure 10 times and cut once kind of situation. So I took my time as far as this is concerned, measuring over and over again to make sure I got this window centered in here and I was happy with the location of it. To hold the template to the ceiling, I use things that I use for templating very often, which is neodymium magnets. Now, Emery's had these himself for different things in the van that he's gonna stick to the walls, like the coverings for the windows and such. So they're handy for a lot of different situations, but holding this template on there, they were pretty much perfect for that situation. I used as many of the magnets as he had so that I could just get this thing held in position exactly where it wanted to be. The template wasn't sagging or anything like that. It fit to the roof the way it was going to be when the windows installed. Now, after I'm happy with the position of the template and I think it's where I want it to be, I go around the outside of edge with a Sharpie and I mark it all out so I know where my cut line's gonna be. However, I'm not actually gonna be cutting this from the inside of the van. If I was cutting it from the inside, all the debris would be falling on me the entire time and the panel would wanna flex on me. And the biggest problem is that the cross member that I had to mark the distance off of, I would hit that if I was trying to cut that with the jigsaw that I'm gonna be using. So it just wouldn't work out well for me. But the reason that I marked it from the inside inside was I found that easier to center up the position of the sunroof, not interfere with any of the cross members. It was just far easier to mark it this way than from the outside of the van. How I'm gonna get the marks to the outside of the van is pretty simple. I bring a center punch, I'm using an automatic center punch, and I found various points around the template that I thought were gonna be good to go ahead and center punch and drill holes. Now I did step drill this up. I started at an eighth inch drill bit and I worked my way up to I believe about a three eighths inch hole somewhere around there so that I could fit that jigsaw blade in there cleanly. Now 
Now the jigsaw blade does have to have at least somewhere to start from. So I have to have the bare minimum one of these holes. However, I put numerous ones so that I can have relief as I'm cutting. I can cut from one hole to another, take a break. I can use it at the beginning and ends of a radius of a corner. And that allows me to make that corner a little easier as I'm going through this process. Now the dual function of those holes is that I also can now take that template. I know where on that template I have marked for those holes so I can place a template on the outside of the roof and then line it up with those holes and mark around a template for my cut line. I found this to be a pretty accurate method. The more holes I have to center that template up off of, the better this will work out. Unfortunately, I forgot to film doing that. I was involved in the process, unfortunately. So you can see the cut line marked out here and get the idea of what I'm talking about. After we have our cut line marked out, the holes marked in the corners, it's time to start cutting on this thing. I threw on some sunglasses, which I'm using as eye protection in this situation, and also a pair of my Isotunes Pro 2.0 Bluetooth hearing protection. So I can listen to some music and protect my hearing at the same time, because that is very important when you're doing work like this. After we have the cut lines marked out, we've got the holes drilled into this thing, it's time to start cutting. We're using a cordless jigsaw in this situation, just because it was a little easy and it's what my friend had. Personally, I would more often use, say, an air body saw that I commonly use for this type of situation. However, we didn't have a compressor on hand that would feed that. It just wasn't gonna work out, but it would cut the corners a little easier. But the jigsaw did work just fine for our situation. The keys to using the jigsaw is taking my time. Go slow, there's no reason to rush through this process. Try and keep to my line as best as I can. Hold it down flat so that the flat shoe of the jigsaw is against the metal. This not only keeps the saw from jumping, but keeps the metal from jumping as well. A quick side note I should mention, I did apply a double layer of painter's tape around the entire opening on the outside of the van. This is so when I was using the jigsaw, the shoe of that jigsaw would ride along that painter's tape, not along the paint of the vehicle. Some of the metal shavings could get underneath that shoe and scratch and scrape on the paint. We don't want that. We don't want to have to come back and touch any of this up later. So this just prevents some damage to the roof. I didn't get any footage of it, but there's actually a point after I made a few cuts on that roof panel where Emrys was inside of the van wearing his PPE as well and holding a little bit of pressure up on the panel. This keeps it from bouncing as the jigsaw is cutting. If the jigsaw were to grab and the panel were to jump, it could really screw up the blade on the jigsaw, bend the metal and just damage the cut line that I'm working with. So just a little upward pressure as I was cutting allowed him to provide some stability to that panel. Now I made my last cuts from the inside. I dealt with the shower of the debris off of this thing because I do find that it's important to not just let a panel fall. If you're gonna go ahead and cut it out and you just let it fall out of the opening, that last little bit of a cut can actually grab, it can hold, and it can tear, and it can bend the metal as it's falling out of the opening. So I do find it important to support the metal all the way to the end of the cut, and that's what I did here. After we got the big chunk of the opening out, I definitely was a little conservative on this opening. I didn't want to push my luck too much and cut too large, and I did find that that was kind of important. It wouldn't be too difficult to cut too large on this thing and have it just be not sealing up properly or end up with a window that kind of falls through it. You'd have to go pretty far for that to happen, but still, it's better to be conservative and file your opening out to where you need it than to cut too much out. I also used the file to go ahead and clean up the edges, deburr the edges, just making sure I didn't have any sharp hanging edges on this thing that would tear up a gasket or tear us up while we're installing the window in. If you cut this thing properly, the window does fit pretty darn tight, so getting that last little bit of deburring and filing done will save you a lot of trouble. I also went ahead in a few spots where I might have gone off my cut line, I came in with a pair of hand snips and I just cleaned up to my cut line with those. Now, you really need a good quality set of snips to do this and that's what I was using here with these Bessie snips. I'm gonna do a video about these soon. I'm really liking these. After the opening is deburred, it's cut out, we are ready to move forward. However, we're not ready to throw the window in just yet. It's time to do a little cleanup. We went around with the vacuum, made sure it wasn't metal shavings and stuff that was gonna get trapped underneath the gasket surfaces or by paint because that's what we did next. We came along with a can of Rust-Oleum self-etched primer and we primed up the bare metal. I don't wanna leave bare metal anywhere. Anytime you're cutting a hole in something like this, you should at the bare minimum touch up the edge that you cut out. That is an area where you might think, well, there's no water getting to it. If there's water getting to it, my sunroof is leaking. 
there is humidity, especially in a van that you're gonna be living in, something like this where the human body is heating it up, a heater might be heating up. If you have a shower in there especially, there's gonna be moisture inside of the van and that condensation can form up in areas you're not thinking it's getting to. Emery's had an excellent idea. The way he's been doing it when he's been cutting things into this van is he just takes a, a piece of cardboard, metal, something, and he sprays the paint onto that rather than having to tape off and mask out the opening, spray that onto that piece of metal and then take a rag and then go ahead and apply it by hand. This works perfectly fine for applying in a situation like this. It allowed me to control where I was applying the primer and then paint afterward. I didn't end up filming the painting process, but we did apply paint after the primer cured for just that added level of protection. Now, an important thing that some of you are probably wondering about, since we're installing this sunroof into a ribbed section of the roof, not a flat section where they might have intended a sunroof to be, this is a ribbed area, that means that that is gonna have a gap underneath of the ceiling surface of that sunroof to the roof panel. Now we were lucky, we actually ended up doing this work at a friend of Emery's, Chris, uh, from Light AF. That is a hiking backpacking company. They produce backpacking bags and various products for hikers. As such, they had a whole bunch of scraps of this kind of spongy foam that is also waterproof. This seemed to be the perfect option for us. It was the proper thickness for the depth of the ribs. It was just a little taller than the depth of the ribs, so the sunroof would actually squish it down into the opening and help it to seal in there. Now I cut each and every one of these for each and every one of the ribs and I angled it so it actually matched the steep angle of the ribs themselves. My goal was to get as much of that opening filled up with this foam before any butyl or any window came into play as I could. And then just to keep things from shifting around, I used a little bit of 3M spray adhesive on each of them. This was just only to keep the foam from moving out of position while we were installing the sunroof. It's not for any sealing or anything like that. Now, most likely you're not doing this at a backpacking company, so you might not have access to these scraps of foam. You could use something like the materials you can buy at a hardware store to seal up an AC unit into a window or into a wall. That kind of sticky backed foam that they have, it's a very similar stuff to what we used here, though I think the stuff we use here is probably a little better quality overall. Now it's time to plug that hole up with a sunroof. So we took the sunroof, flipped that upside down and applied the butyl tape to the entire flange all the way around, making sure that we will not have any gaps or areas. Anywhere they butt it up, we try to kind of smooth them together. You gotta make sure that you do the best that you can to prevent any leaks from occurring. After the butyl tape was applied, we carefully handled the window frame and got it up on the top of the van. And then it's a matter of just shoehorning this thing in. There's kind of a flange on the inside edge of this thing that has to slip in past the opening. The opening that you're cutting is not the size of that flange. It's actually a little bit smaller. So it is absolutely a shoehorn situation where you have to get one corner started and work your way around kind of clipping this thing in. And once it's clipped in past that flange, it'll move around freely from there. Now we did run into one problem when it came time to install the inner flange which sandwiches the outer flange of the window frame to the roof skin we did find that the screws weren't long enough because we're not necessarily installing it where they expect you to install it because of those rib steps that added like three eighths of an inch to the length that we needed for our screws we got about half inch longer screws and it worked out just fine for us, but that was a trip to the hardware store to get some stainless screws. I did end up using a couple of quick little clamps just to hold the flange up. They're just there to kind of compress the foam on the roof a little bit and allow me to get the screws in where I needed them to be, and that's all. And that is it for the CRL sunroof. It really was a smooth operation. It was a lot of second guessing. Is this right? This doesn't seem right. Especially when we got to the point where we had to kind of like clip the sunroof flange in. It felt like it was just wrong. Like I didn't cut the opening large enough. And I'm very, very glad that I didn't go back and file more out of it or cut more out of it. I would have ended up really on the razor edge of what the inner flange would have been able to grip and sandwich onto had I gone back and done any of that. Now, Emery's did go back and apply lap seal to it. I didn't get any footage of that, unfortunately, but he did put lap seal all the way around this thing just because he wanted to be, have that extra layer of sealing. He did say that he made it through a couple of rainstorms before he put the lap seal on there and did not have any issues with leaks, but he just wanted to be better, safe and sorry for 10 years down the road and such. 
I used basically the same process on the rear door windows as I did on the sunroof. It was pretty straightforward. Instead of a template, I had the inner flange of the inner door skin of the van that gave me my template mark before my cut line. And that was where I was going to be cutting the material out. So again, I went around, I drilled a handful of holes into it to go ahead and mark out the opening and the perimeter of it. And then I just marked in between each of those holes. The way we marked the corners was we actually used one of these kind of pin style template gauges. And these things are really handy for woodworking, metalworking. I use these all the time. Emery's just happened to have this one and it worked out well to mark the corners for the window opening. I didn't film cutting out the window opening or any of that because it's the same as the roof skin, as I said. Emery's held pressure on the inside while I cut from the outside. Again, I applied masking tape to the outside to prevent from scratching. Even though this window is gonna cover up this opening, there's no reason to scratch the metal if I don't have to. I did cut a little conservative because I was worried about cutting into that inner flange on the inside of this thing. So I did go through and basically cut almost the entire opening to my final width with a pair of hand snips. But if you're not as worried about that, you could go ahead and cut right up to that line for yourself. After we were happy with the opening that we cut into this, we did go back and do the primer and paint and apply that all the way around this opening to prevent it from rusting. Especially this one, more so than the sunroof, is going to have more elements to it. If you open up the doors and it starts raining or something, that bare metal is still there and it is visible through the opening if you really look for it. So you need to think about that. Now the Van Windows Direct kit that we're using did come with an edge guard and we applied that to just the inner door skin layer, not Emery said some folks are applying that to like both layers and sandwiching the two layers together. I don't think that's the right way to go about that. There's supposed to be a gap there for give of the metal. And also there are various points around that window opening where the metal is even further apart and spaced at a larger gap. Trying to fit it across both pieces of material, I think is a mistake. The Van Window Direct Kit did come with some primer that we were meant to apply to the paint all the way around the window opening. I did that where I knew I was gonna be applying the urethane to it. It did not come with nearly as much as I might've liked so that I could really apply it on there. And you do have to be careful. This stuff will drip easily and it does not come off of paint very nicely. It's meant to etch into the paint. So you wanna be careful. Honestly, I probably should have masking tape below where I was applying this to protect the paint. Didn't get any on it the first time, but the second time I did, and that was definitely a little bit of an ordeal to clean off. After we're all primed up, it's time to apply the urethane to the opening. The Van Windows Direct Install Kit came with this urethane that is meant to prime itself to the glass and stick to the primed paint on the other side. Now you might notice where I'm applying the bead of this urethane is a little further away from the opening itself. It's not directly on the opening or on the flange edge. I went say maybe about three quarters of an inch to an inch wider than the opening because the window covers a large area here. You don't need to be right up on the flange opening. And the last thing I wanted was when we put this window on there for that urethane to squish into the opening, this stuff is like thick tar. You do not want to try and wipe this out of there. It's not going to work out well for you. So keeping it so when it squishes, it doesn't squish into your opening is just going to work out way better for you. I made sure to get one solid bead all the way around the window. So we're not going to worry about any leaks here. And then I applied a little extra to the window itself in wider areas, a little farther away from the window opening. That's just there to hold the window. So that if for some reason somebody grabbed the edge of the glass and tried to pull, they wouldn't have as much leverage on the inner flange glue as they would from the outside edge. A quick note about this, use a good caulk gun. We did not. We used the cheapest caulk gun that I've seen in a while. And we thought, ah, we got good grip strength. We'll get this done. We're tough men. Uh, yeah, no. This was a chore. This was both hands on the caulk gun. I had to squeeze while Emery's guided the caulk gun around that thing. A cheap caulk gun is not the way to do this. I'm gonna say caulk a lot of times in this video, apparently. We actually only ended up doing one window that day because of the cheap caulk gun. It was so difficult to do. Both of us, our arms were pumped. We're both former rock climbers and we felt like we had just gone a day at the climbing gym after doing this. So it was, it was a nightmare. The next day we went to Lowe's, picked up a good quality caulk gun. Now Van Windows Direct recommends a 26 to one thrust ratio caulk gun. Yeah, they're rated right in thrust ratio. This is just double entendres left and right. We were only able to get a 13 to one thrust ratio caulk gun at the local hardware store. And that worked out perfectly fine for us on the next day. And I'm not even saying that as somebody who thinks they have decent grip strength. It was just pretty easy with a 13 to one gun. Thrust ratio, caulk gun, thrust ratio, caulk gun.
Then it was time to go ahead and just simply apply the window where we wanted it. Now your best bet is to go ahead and get it as close to the position you think it's gonna be in before you go stick it against that urethane. This stuff does move at first, but it doesn't take long before it starts to set up and doesn't wanna move. So you gotta get as close as you can before you do anything else. Now you gotta remember, you're not supposed to drive the vehicle for six hours after you glue this window on. From the time you put that urethane on to you move again should be six hours. So you need to consider that before you go applying this thing and also to go ahead and clamp it in position. Now we just used a quick little rubber footed clamp and that was not to squeeze the window on, that was simply providing a light pressure to hold the window on so we can go ahead and then apply the tape. The tape came from Van Windows Direct in their install kit it's supposedly special window tape, and I did find that it was tougher than standard masking tape, both in the way that it stuck and how hard it was to tear. Only a little tougher, but it did seem to work pretty darn well. We went a little overboard with the taping because, uh, well, quite honestly, we were gonna be driving in less than six hours, but also just because it doesn't hurt. Better safe than sorry, hold that thing where you want it to be and leave it there. I'd recommend leaving that tape on there for about 24 hours at the least, and also not slamming the doors on the van, creating an inside pressure situation. A lot of you with the van life, you might have a vent in the roof or something that you could open to let that pressure out anyway, so I would recommend something like that. Last but most certainly not least, we went ahead and installed the light bar that Emery's picked up. This is just a budget Amazon one. One of the big hurdles with installing the light bar was where the heck do you pass the wiring through to get it inside to the battery and to the switch on the dashboard. Emery's did get a install kit that came with a switch and he installed that switch onto the knee panel of the dashboard underneath the steering column. Emery's had the idea of maybe we can pass the wiring through like underneath the XM satellite radio antenna. And once we looked at it, we kind of figured out that wasn't gonna work, but he didn't care about satellite radio. In fact, he was kind of annoyed by having it. So I went ahead and just destroyed the satellite radio antenna and passed the wiring through there. It's already a sealed up opening passing through the roof of the van, so it's not gonna leak, and it's gonna go ahead and get the wiring where we need it. I ended up drilling a hole in the inner aluminum structure of the thing so that the wire could pass through it there after I pulled the antenna mechanism off of it. Then there was a kind of inner flange where the antenna had sat in. I broke that away and then filed it a little bit so that the wires weren't gonna chafe on that flange. And lastly, I went ahead and drilled out the actual plastic opening so we can install a good grommet into it so that that would seal to the wire as it passed through the opening. I realize this isn't a very in-depth showing of how the heck you would do something like this, but honestly, this was a bit of a seat of the pants modification. There's not an exact dimension that I can give you for where to do this, especially if your install kit might be a little bit different. I'll throw a link in the description of the install kit that he did use. Now we did use relays with this that came with the install kit. You do wanna do that. You don't wanna go ahead and just wire through a switch. You need to be safe about this and wire with a relay for this large of a load on your system. It is only LEDs, but it's a lot of LEDs. It can pull a serious amount of amperage if it wants to. And might as well show you a quick demonstration of how this thing works. Now, this is a in course in North Philadelphia, so it's not exactly a dark field somewhere that's really gonna show this off, but I still think it's pretty impressive to see my entire neighborhood light up with this darn thing. Now I didn't really include how the light bar itself actually got attached to the roof because it was mounted to Emery's solar panel array. I know that this can vary from person to person so I didn't really think that it made sense to show you folks how we installed it since we didn't drill any holes in the roof or use any brackets that were specific to the van. We mounted it to his solar panel array that might work out for some of you or not others so I didn't really think that that was worth filming the entire thing. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I hope you found this interesting. This van life stuff is really neat to me. It really allows a weird, interesting cross-section of customizing vehicles and home decor and all kinds of stuff. I couldn't personally do it between my three animals and my entire office full of equipment and stuff that I have and all my tools. I couldn't do it, but it works out for somebody like Emery's just fine. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please go ahead and drop it a like. It really helps out. Let me know in the comments down below. Is there anything you would have done differently here? Did this help you out in your van life or do you just think this stuff is neat? Let me know in the comments down below. Check out the Patreon account, patreon.com slash hippie that directly supports this channel and get subscribed to keep up to date with all the Hot Rod Hippie content. Thanks for coming around, folks.